Hello, what's up? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's Sam. I think we are overdue for a favorites video. So welcome to a favorites video. Okay, let's get into it. My top picks for the month of May. Let's start out with this lovely begonia. Isn't she stunning? This is begonia looking glass. You guys see all the new growth? I feel like this one is pretty self-explanatory as to why this is a favorite. I mean, she's doing fantastic. Turn it around. We have this outstanding red abaxial side. Obviously get to really see that red and just how bright it is in contrast with the silvery front sides of the leaves. So many of my begonias will kind of die off in the winter and then come spring, as long as you keep the roots healthy and there's some stem left to work with they just grow back this one is just like the embodiment of a beautiful begonia i hope she continues to grow like this for me so she really has me impressed right now my maranta so i'm pretty sure i've said it before in my opinion marantas are the easiest of the prayer plant family to keep happy and to keep beautiful but to go even a step further, the rabbit's foot Maranta. These are the absolute most easygoing prayer plants I've ever kept. And I've kept a lot, okay? I don't know what it is. I don't know what the difference is in the like red veined or the green Marantas and the rabbit foot. But I just find the rabbit foot to be much less finicky, much less dramatic. Like in between waterings, if you skip a watering, it's really not that big of a deal. So we have my variegated rabbit's foot right here. I've had this plant for years. This was one of my first prayer plants, I'm pretty sure. And I got it as like a couple of cuttings, I think. And I gotta really get some up close footage of her because... Anyway, this past winter, she went a little bit stagnant. Stopped growing so much, but she was fine. So I up-potted her to this larger planter and I threw her under a grow light and you guys, and I've also been fertilizing, of course. She was kind of losing her variegation. Not really. She just, it wasn't nearly as prominent as before. I think it's a combination of repotting her and then spring coming along, of course, and putting her under my colored grow lights. Some plants love them. Some plants hate them. So anyways, I'm just noticing all of the new growth, first of all but also all of the beautiful new variegation she's putting out. Like she's getting it back. Oh, it's so good. And if you can see here, which I think you can, the pink, look at the pink in the variegation. So you get this creamy white yellowish uh, coloration with the green. And then you also get this pink mixed in with the variegation. If you give the plant enough light, it's incredible. Uh, and then, of course, the super dark, almost like a brown, browny color, rabbit foot pattern. There's just so much going on with her. These are new leaves here. And just look, you have new rolled up leaves really everywhere. I don't know. If you're wanting to get into prayer plants, if you love the way Calatheas look, for instance, but you're not a fan of their diva behavior, get you some rabbit foot Marantas. I mean, and I. All Marantas are going to be easier, in my opinion, where I live than Calathea. However, the rabbit's foot's just where it's at. I had to include this one as well. This is just your standard rabbit's foot Maranta. It's not the variegated. It's exactly like the one I just showed you without the variegation, right? So I had picked up two little three-inch pots of this at Walmart because we never get these in. So I picked up two because they were healthy and they were so cute. And I just love, like I said, I love this type of Maranta. And I potted them together. I think I did it in a live stream. It has taken off you guys. And it sets on a bottom shelf over here so it doesn't get like a super bright amount of light. But even still, like look at all these new babes. It's growing so well. Cannot recommend the rabbit's foot Maranta enough, honestly. 
forgive me. I don't know the name of this plant. This was sent to me. It's a Hoya, obviously. But he was sent to me as a little cutting. He had a couple of leaves and a long vine. And like a secret Santa type of exchange from another planty friend off of her mother plant. It was a Hoya I had never heard of before. And honestly, I've still never heard of it. Like I've never heard anyone else talking about it. I will try to find the name and put it on the screen. I know I should have done my research. This plant was lost in a Ziploc bag of moss that I was trying to root it in for like almost a year. And I found it and it was well rooted. It was alive somehow. So I found it whenever I was moving around shelving, like my plant shelving, it had somehow gotten pushed up under the very bottom shelf on the floor. And so I, I don't remember what I did with it then, if I put it in a pot of moss or what, but I eventually potted it up in this nice woody soil mix, chunky soil mix, and it's just been doing so good. So I love this Hoya because of the leaf size, for one. I mean, that's like the most obvious thing, I think. And they have potential of getting even larger, but also just look how shiny and waxy the coating on the leaf is. It's wow. It's really, really pretty. So these are his newest leaves. He just put these out. This one isn't, you know, I don't know if it's going to get any larger. I don't really care, to be honest, because I'm so stoked with this one. Look how big it is. And I still don't know if it's even done doing its thing and growing yet. It could get larger. Like before that, this one and this one, I guess, would be the largest, the longest anyway on the plant. The stem is continuing to grow. Hopefully it'll continue putting out more leaves, but I am going to want to cut it back soon. I definitely want to let it get more established before I do that. I'm going to let it put out several more sets of leaves and then I will take a cutting as much as it's going to kill me because I do want to encourage him to push out a new growth point from somewhere else on the plant so we can kind of fill out and get a little bit more full not just one long vine. So we'll do that in the future, I'm sure. I had to show this plant. And just the size of those leaves, like I said, they're huge, they're shiny, they're waxy, they're glossy, glossy, glossy. Okay, here, oh my gosh. Hear me out, I know, I know, I know. But look, just look. So this is my Philo Serpens, and she is a wobbly, wobbly babe. This was a major wishlist plant for so long. Over the years, I've ended up getting like the Squamiferum, the Fibrosum. I don't know, there's a couple different fuzzy petiole Philos that I got because I was wanting the Serpens, but it was too dang expensive, honestly. I get like the cheaper alternatives, and I love them. Okay, don't get me wrong, but none of them could compare to the real thing. Look at that. Like, are we joking? We're not. This plant has definitely struggled with the mites. They just love my philodendron, y'all. Philodendron, alocasia, they love them. It's definitely had its struggles. It took me a long while to get it really established and growing putting out good leaves and instead of like dropping and losing leaves constantly, it's been worth it. That's all I can say. So I have it in this pot for support. It's in a little plastic, well, it's like a six inch, six or eight inch plastic planter of moss that I recently upped it to. It was in a little four or five inch planter and it was just, yeah, it was drying out way too fast and it needed a pull. I got some of these really awesome moss poles that hold in the moisture, they're extendable. That's a whole nother subject. And you can see she's, she already needs an extension, but this is her new leaf. It's so hard to show you because she is so incredibly wobbly, but that is the new leaf right there. There is the growth point right here. And I haven't removed these lower leaves. I know they're ugly, kind of throws the plant off, but it's fine, it's fine. Spider mites happen and all of the new growth looks really good. So I'll take it. I'm really proud of this plant and I'm stoked to have it and have the chance to grow it 
in my collection like all the way around but the fact that she's finally like getting it together and and becoming more happy and growing for me i really couldn't ask for anything else so i did just want to talk about this one for a minute it's definitely a favorite right now it's just like one of those plants that i wanted and i wanted and i wanted kind of like the florida beauty and if i wasn't becoming super incredibly redundant with that plant it would definitely be my favorites as well but yeah here's a little update i guess on the serpents she's doing well I'm not going to spend too awful long talking about this plant because I've shown it in a couple videos. Like she keeps growing. So as she grows, I keep attaching and attaching like each node. And we're going to be attaching this new leaf, which is one she's just now putting out. Uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. Probably here and then bring it down. This is uh, my Skindapsis Jade Satin. This is the first time I've ever been able to grow one successfully and keep it happy. I've tried a couple times and failed and they die on me. They always rot out on me after shipping. But this one has not. And it, you know, it did take time to acclimate for a while after it arrived. But I've had her for a good while now. And I have to say, she's just been like growing one after one leaf after another, especially since I put her on this trellis. I put her on this trellis when she was like to here maybe here I, I, this leaf might have been like coming in i always thought these were pretty slow growers but not no they just they weren't happy i guess so uh yeah once it reaches the bottom down here i'm probably gonna have to cut it i don't know can i keep like wrapping it around i have no idea anyways this skindapsis is just like blowing me away i find it beautiful it looks nice on this trellis and the way that it's growing and the pot i think that adds a little pizzazz to it as well a little color which we love so yeah my skindapsis jade satin is doing her thing and i am in love in love this is a little different this is one that y'all have not seen probably in years i mean i know i showed it a few years ago uh I, I have the unboxing on my channel from like 2019, I think. I think 2019, I'm pretty sure, of me unboxing this plant and I had gotten like a begonia or something with it. This is actually a peperomia. This is peperomia and Kana. I had gotten to the point over the last year, year and a half or so, where it was losing leaves and all of the new leaves were coming in like tiny and curled wasn't growing very well at all and I was sad because these are so pretty when they're lush and full they're just so cool they have a really nice leaf shape to them uh, I just think it's really neat looking and then they're fuzzy like the entirety of the leaf is covered in fuzz what <laughs> uh and I love that it feels nice it looks nice it's just so cute so I've kind of really made it a mission made it a priority over the last little bit I don't know how long to take better care of her and get her to grow better and put out some new growth points and whatnot I did take a cutting I snipped it because it was getting leggy and yeah so I'd snipped it a good while ago it's been a while now I moved it under a different grow light and what do you know you guys it started growing really nice and putting out healthy looking foliage but also it put off this little pup. It put off a, a new plant after I cut it um, here on the side. And look how good those leaves look. And look how large this one is. Like, yes, that is the thing. Like, I want big, plump, juicy, hairy leaves on her. That is my goal. So I'm really excited about this. There's just constant new leaves on her. This one got ripped, which is really unfortunate because it was kind of a good size. It was so pretty. And then also, I just noticed when I pulled her out for this video, look, there's another little pup, another little growth point with new leaves coming off of the this stem down here, which I think there was another stem here that was just all bare. Like there was no leaves on it, just one long leggy stem. And so I cut that off and it's putting out new babes. I really also like it in this bright yellow planter. It's just, it's a vibe. 
but she's doing great and I can't wait to show her to you when she's like all full and lush and just kind of growing every which way. I have contemplated buying another like more full Encana so many times because they're so, it's a Peperomia. They're so inexpensive and um, you can find them all over the internet. I never see them in person. If I were to ever run across one in store, 100% I would buy it, but I'm proud of her. We have to do this begonia. We have one more begonia and she has a couple yellow leaves and I also knocked off a couple of her blooms, like just getting her out and preparing to film. This is begonia polygonoides. I feel like I've talked about her a, a little bit on my channel. She was thirsty. I just watered her. I've definitely noticed when she's thirsty, she drops leaves and blooms really easily. Like you can look at it the wrong way and it'll drop leaves, but it's just because the roots need water to pump the leaves. But this begonia is constantly in bloom. She has the cutest little white blooms with a yellow center. I love it. And ever since I put her in this planter, I'm just like obsessed. Um, I love seeing her trail and grow. I love that she doesn't look like a begonia. If a Hoya and a pepperoni had a baby, that's, this is what I imagine it would look like. I'm not going to spend too long on this because I'm losing leaves everywhere. Like I just watered her before I started filming, but it's just such a cool plant. I love plants that don't look anything like what they are for some reason. And also, hello, it's trilling. It is a trilling begonia. Are you joking me? And it's so easy care. It loves bright light. It is such a joy and I would love, I would absolutely love to bring in more begonias like this, like trilling types of begonias. There's so many other types similar to this and I'm about it. Okay. I am about it, but yeah, this one's totally a favorite right now. So I had to touch on her for just a sec. Okay. I think this is the last one we're going to talk about today, but, and there's so many more that I'm loving you guys, but I got to save some content for other videos, right? This is my Dyskidia. This is a plant that has completely blown me away because when I brought this home, it was so sick. I've had it for four or five years now. I think it was probably on the clearance rack uh, at a big box store. It was just, it was sick. It was losing all of its leaves, but I don't know. I really, there was something about it I liked and it was discounted. So I said, why not? I brought it home. I repotted it in fresh soil, give it really bright light. It has grown so much. This is like one of the least fussy plants. It often gets overlooked because of just how easy it is. I mean, honestly, I only water this probably like once a month. Um, I, I will start to notice some of the, the leaves getting yellow and dropping, and that's when I water it. I've been staying on the watering a lot better as of lately because I moved it back in my bathroom, and it looks awesome. It's growing so good. I love that this is such a full and just like crazy growing plant, but it takes up so little space. I could, I can't even try to get it off this macrame hanger. If I wanted to, I don't think, because it's so entwined. Look at it. It's just, it's like one of the most common Dyskidia you can purchase. I don't remember what it is exactly, but there's a new vine there. It's just constantly shooting off new vines and new leaves, and I just think, it looks so nice. Leaves are so thick and juicy. It's so good. I love it. And this little hanging plant table just suits it so well, I think. Dyskidia. So I wanted to add a couple more plants to this. This is my Philodendron Summer Glory. She is a cross between Philodendron Gloriosum. She is a cross between Philodendron Gloriosum and a Philodendron Macaulay Spinale. She actually does not need anything to climb because she has the growth habit of a Macaulay Spinale. She also has this gorgeous deep dark red on her new leaves and it actually takes quite a long time to fade. So this was the last newest leaf a couple of months ago and you can see it still has that dark coloration to it compared to like some of the older leaves. 
and then this is the new leaf she just put out this is the new leaf it just put out like oh it's so pretty I'm really really enjoying this one and watching it grow because I struggle with the gloriosum I always have I've had a couple of them this hybrid does have the leaf shape of gloriosum and it also has the it's not quite as intense but it has the veining of a gloriosum as well it's really uh it's really an eye catcher I had to move it out where I could really see it more every day because it's just so pretty I felt like I wasn't getting the full experience so yeah philodendron summer glory excellent hybrid uh, very easy care. It's not the fastest grower in the world, but it's definitely faster than the Gloriosum, at least for me. We have a new leaf right there, getting ready to make its way up, so I think it's liking where I have it living, actually. Okay, moving on. The last favorite for this video is going to have to be my Philodendron Giganteum. So I have the variegated and the regular green. I love both of them, but this all green giganteum all the way around has been such a fantastic plant such a fantastic plant it shot off a couple different plants in this pot from the mother plant the leaves just continue getting larger and larger um, this is a new leaf here so pretty this is another new leaf here they're just so big and shiny i don't know i'm just thoroughly impressed so I recently put this coconut chip pole down in here because I'm out of moss um, this is a d-shaped moss pole that I have made several of and inserted in my plants just most of them are filled with moss sphagnum moss rather than the coconut chips but it's a little bit of an experiment that I'm doing I potted this plant and put this pole in but honestly, all of this growth has been with no pole, not even for support. It's just kind of been freely growing. So since it's doing so well and growing so quickly and large, I decided I wanted to put a pole in here and see just how large I can get him. Okay, you guys, my kids are having a fit in there. I gotta go. I think we're all going out and about and do something. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a comment and let me know what are your current favorite plants in your collection and what do you think of my choices? I will see you guys again in the next one. I love ya. Bye!